In this video, we're going to cover the default context length for Olama, what tokens are and why you should care about all of this. We'll cover setting up the Olama context window. So if you want to customize the, the context size, so it's not just set to the default. We'll go through a coding example in Open Web UI with some workarounds for dealing with small context windows, and also an example of document ingestion uh, reading in a PDF in Open Web UI. So the very first thing I want to emphasize is that when you're browsing Olama models, you'll see things listed like this model supports up to 128K tokens. Um, that might be true for some distills of the model or some parameterizations, but like here we're looking at Quen 2.57b. It lists the context length at about 32K, and that's the maximum context length. Okay, so Olama by default only uses a 2K context length, which is extremely short. That means 2,000 tokens. Now you might be asking yourself, what does 2,000 tokens actually look like? And we can show that here. So we'll use the website Tick Tokenizer, which will let us see how LLMs tokenize data. I'm gonna choose my Quen model, paste in some text from the history of machine learning. This is just over 500 words, which is just over a page in Microsoft Word. When I paste it in, I get 679 tokens. So we can think of 2K context limit might get us maybe three pages of typical text. And this is basically before the model starts forgetting things or causing other kinds of issues, which we'll look at here shortly. Okay, so before we get into the practical examples, I did just wanna show how right now I'm running Quen 2.5 14b, and we're having a RAM a VRAM usage of 11 gigabytes, and we can use the command slash set parameter num underscore ctx to change the contact size. So I've changed it to 8,000. I found that I need to actually run a prompt for it to update the VRAM usage, so I asked it to tell me a joke. And down below, I'm checking the utilization with Olama PS showing that we've jumped up to 18 gigs of VRAM. So um, then I'll go back, I'll bump up the context window a little bit more, 10,000 tokens, and ask another question. And our VRAM usage goes all the way up to 20 gigabytes. So that's about the most I can handle on my GPU. Okay, so finally getting to the good stuff, the practical examples here. And I'm gonna use my uh, favorite test of making a bouncing ball simulation. And we'll go with the big model, Quen 2.5 Coder 32B, but this is using the default 2K context window. So after my first prompt, I do have a bouncing ball, which is great, but if I check how many tokens I've used, it's already close to a thousand. So as I start asking follow-up questions, trying to incorporate more functionality, I'm gonna quickly exceed that 2K context window. And in fact, actually here, I wasn't expecting this to fail so early, but we'll find that it forgets to like close the brackets on the JavaScript, so it just doesn't work anymore. Um, we can see we went slightly over the 2,000 tokens, and this is exactly the type of behavior I tend to see when you exceed the context window. It just starts forgetting things, uh, making very simple mistakes. It doesn't outright fail. It'll continue to try to do its work, um, and there's not really great visibility for the user that you've exceeded the context window. So what can we do to fix this? Well, I know I can't go to a bigger context window on that other model because it's already filling my GPU. So I can switch the model on the fly during the conversation here, go to the options and key in my own context length rather than the default 2000. Uh, from the testing we did earlier, I happen to know I can run 10,000 context on a 14 billion parameter model on my GPU, and I'll just ask it to regenerate that prompt. And once the model's done thinking, we'll see it come here for us. We have a uh, ultimately a working script, and we're still, again, just over 2,000 tokens, but this time it's actually working and we can continue going on refining with it. And I went back and forth quite a lot. I mean, 10K tokens is enough, at least on a very simple coding example like this, that we can have multiple rounds of backs and forths. I'll um, 
speed it up for you so you don't have to see it all. But ultimately I ended up with an example that uh, worked pretty nicely and captured the effects I wanted. And this was after maybe six to 8,000 tokens. So um, another technique you can use to work around having such a limited context window is to basically just load a lot more into your initial prompt. Try to minimize the back and forth in the LLM because as you continue the conversation, just think it's constantly feeding the prior history of the conversation back to itself. So here we go. I'm starting a fresh chat and I'm just going to paste in what is basically a summary of all the requirements I had through the back and forth working iteratively with the other chat window and trying to see if uh, even with the default 2K context window, if we can get the result that I want. And there's a little bit of movie magic here. Uh, the first attempt I didn't like, I did regenerate the response, but ultimately it did get uh, pretty close to where I wanted to be in just around 2,000 tokens uh, by just being more upfront with those requirements. And this is also, by the way, very similar to how you want to work with reasoning models or thinking models is front loading your prompt as much as possible to capture uh, capture all the requirements. So the second example I wanted to go over regarding context windows is for document ingestion or you know say you're attaching really big documents PDFs or Word documents or whatever else that you want the LLM to summarize or search through for you. That's a scenario where I would expect the context window to matter. So I started small here with this is a six page PDF from DigiKey for some fans specifications. And I was just asking it to find how loud the fan is. And in this case, both the, uh, both the model with the larger context window and the model with the smaller context window were both able to give me the same answer. Uh, it showed they only used about 1,200 tokens, so I'm not sure how they um, parse the PDF, but it must be pretty efficient. This was about a six-page PDF here, and uh, the key noise information was on page four. I think the, uh, or no, sorry, this is a 14-page PDF. Nope. This is a 14-page PDF here. Uh, the key noise information was on page four, and then they information about the sound testing chamber was quite a few pages after that. So next I went to a much, much larger PDF. This is a manual for an old Toshiba laptop I have. It's actually uh, several hundred pages long. And I wanted to ask it about what to do to troubleshoot the hard drive because there's a really specific uh, thing that's mentioned in there. And In this case, the uh, small context window model fails. It, it doesn't fail, it does give an answer. So again, it's not going to just error out. It's gonna give you an answer, but none of these things were what I was expecting to see here. Whereas the uh, much smaller parameter count model with the much larger context size actually gave me the specific line that I would have expected you know, a human to give me if they had read this full 300 page uh, manual. So to summarize here, we talked about kind of the importance of the context window size and some workarounds if you're dealing with a small context window. One was to use a smaller model as far as footprint so that you can enlarge the context window. This is really relevant if you're running these things locally and you're limited on VRAM. The other was to start a new chat and front load the prompt with the prior chat history, kind of the most concise summary you could come up with. And that's a technique you could use even on the cloud LLMs. Now I should say the LLMs out there in the cloud nowadays, especially the newer ones like Gemini 2.5 and uh, the newly announced Llama 4, the context sizes are just massive, so millions of tokens. So can you compete with that on your home, you know, single GPU setup? No, definitely not. But does that mean that your home single GPU setup isn't valuable? I, I don't think so. I mean, we saw even in this video how I was able to use them to scan, you know, hundreds page long uh, PDFs and so on. And 
It's definitely fun to experiment with, but at the same time, I'll be honest, for my day job, when I need to use LLMs, I don't use these ones. I use ChatGPT, Claude, um, or any of the other, you know, high-end cloud models. Uh, but I've learned a lot through this experience. I got motivated enough that uh, I remembered the words of Jensen Huang. It is safe to upgrade now. And decided to upgrade. So uh, I picked up a used 3090 back when they were going for about six to $700 that had 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And that's enabled me to play around with some of these models that are more practically useful. Um, I've also been getting into the local AI image generation, so that might be something we have some videos on in the future here. 